We're going to click and choose the file that we're going to add. And see if I've got an image we can use here. That's one thing I hadn't prepared for, but that's all right. I'll just grab something. All right, so I'm just going to grab a couple different images. They're not really going to be, I'm just going to use the advanced admin cert logo, um, certification logo here. We'll use another one for another, uh, for the other dynamic image. We'll go ahead and save this, and I'm going to add one more just so that we can see the changes. So you can see this document here is going to show the administrative, advanced admin certification logo. Um, we're going to go ahead and add one more document. Call that one our close one description, and we'll choose a file and upload this one as Let's do the there we go. So these are probably going to be really big images, but that's all right. Um, you can always crop them down before you upload them. All right, so we've got two different images that we can use now. And what we want to do then is get back to our list of our documents to get that URL that we can use in our image formula. And the way you do that is by going to the list of your documents, and next to the document you have a view link. So if I click on the view link next to our closed one description, what you want to copy is everything after the force.com URL. So this servlet, servlet, file download, we'll go ahead and copy that. We're going to go back to our formula. And again, this is for the closed one, so I'll put that one here. And then we'll go back to and grab our prospecting op description uh, image. Grab that one and update it here. So basically what we're telling the system is if the opportunity is in prospecting, display this image. If the opportunity is in closed one, display this image. Um, then the last thing on a case, uh, a case function, you also want to make sure that you have uh, an else operator. So if, if none of the um, stages meet those criteria, you're basically going to have kind of a catch-all image. I'm just going to reuse the prospecting one as our catch-all. And I'll show you what that's going to look like. Okay. All right. We'll go ahead and hit next. And next and save this. I've got quite a few different opportunity layouts. Just make sure you're putting it on the right layout or all of them. And we'll go ahead and save that. So again, we're creating a dynamic image based on opportunity stage. These images, uh, as I mentioned before, um, you, what the, the use case that we're discussing is that if an opportunity is in a specific stage, we can display an image that could have text for your users explaining what to do in that particular um, in that particular opportunity. So let's go ahead and refresh our page here. We should see our new formula field and image. So here's our stage description image. We've got our logo here. Um, and we can see that we're in this closed one stage. Let's say we change the closed the stage to prospecting. Now we should see that change to the other certification logo. Perfect. So there's our other logo. So that's a quick and easy way to do dynamic images or to do dynamic displays of, of information. Um, a lot of times I will put this in its own section and have it be a section with a single column so that I can have much larger images go all across, all the way across the screen here um, in case I have large block images with that text or data in there. All right, so that's the basics on the dynamic images. I'm going to go ahead and jump over now and do another one that also allows us to um, 
to utilize a hyperlink. So if you've ever used a hyperlink function in a formula field, basically allowing your users to click a link in a record, um, you can actually, instead of just making it a link, you can actually make it an image. So let's say on an opportunity you wanted to have a button or a field that says um, log, log a task or log a call. We want to be able to, and, and then be able to utilize that in a list view or a report. You can actually log a call or log um, a task right from a report or a list view if you create a formula field that will allow you to do that. So I'm not going to go into to do all the, the URL hacking to create the code to actually log the call or the task, um, but what I will do is show you how to create that custom hyperlink image um, where you can add that URL code to, to create the call or log the call or, um, or task. So let's again go into our force.com quick access panel here. We're going to go to add a new field, add a formula. We're going to call this one, actually I'm just going to call this one uh, log a task. Okay. And again, we're going to use the text formula type. And then here, what we're going to do in order to create a, the, the illusion of a button is we're actually going to use a document or, or a um, little JPEG that I created that, let me see here, if I go back to our documents, I'm going to add one more document to our shared folder here. Um, let's see if I can find it real quick for us. So basically, I just created a very quick JPEG of what looks like a button. I'm going to show you that in just a second here. Perfect. So this is actually a log a call button. We'll make that externally available. And Find my document, attach it here, and we'll grab that URL. Okay, when I save this, you'll see what I mean by having a button or what what has the illusion of a button. So you see here, I basically just created in like a little image, or you know, you could do it in um, Photoshop or something. Just create something that looks like a button, and then you can display that on your system. To, uh, to log a call. So you see here, we'll go ahead and create this document. Let's go back to our opportunity formula field. And what we're going to use here is the hyperlink function with an image embedded in it. So I'll break this down really quick for us. We've got our hyperlink function, which inside that hyperlink function, we're going to build in the URL that we want the hyperlink to go to, or that, that when you click on it, that's what, it act, what actually happens in the action. And then you have your image that actually displays for your end user or, or the people looking at the, this field. So for the URL, we want to put into this field all of the button code that you need for logging that call. And we could you know, do some quick copy-paste on that basically by going into activity history, grabbing this log a call button, copying the code from the URL here and basically pasting it in here. We do need to make sure we change um, the, excuse me, well, we do need to make sure we change the IDs to make sure that they're fields so that they're, because obviously if we tried to do it right now, um, it would only show it for this one person. You see how these IDs are preset? Uh, we want to make sure that we put in actual field field, uh, merge fields there so that it's dynamic for each opportunity we're looking at. Um, the return URL ID, for example, would be the opportunity ID. And the way you get that is by going to opportunity and, whoops, where am I here? I want the advanced formula function. 
So the return URL will be the opportunity ID. We're going to insert a field, go to opportunity ID, insert. And then that one is the same as this what ID, which we're relating that task to. So we'll go ahead and insert that opportunity ID again there. And then the who ID is going to be our contact, related contact ID. Uh, let me see if I can get that there. No, oh, I'm not going to worry about it. All right. So basically just build, up, build out that URL there. Um, the URLs, though, you got to be careful. If you're going to put IDs in here, you do have to concatenate. You can't put IDs into the quotes for the URL. So you use the and for to, to keep your IDs outside of that URL. Same for our other one here. We want to make sure and close our quotes, do an ampersand, and then go and do another ampersand on the other side of the ID and another quotes to make sure we get all that to display correctly in that URL. Okay, so now we want to make sure and get our image in here as well. So we're going to go back to our documents and grab that log a call button. Back here. And do our view and grab our image URL. And then go back to our formula and paste that in to our image formula URL there. And then our alternate text is just going to be log a call. If for some reason that image doesn't display, it could still check, uh, it can still do that. All right, so the moment of truth, let's check our syntax, make sure we've got all that incorrectly. It says we're missing a close. Okay. Well, that's never good. Um, let's see here. Again, I'm not a coder, so I do a lot of this by trial and error. You want to make sure you get your syntax correct, otherwise it won't work for you. So I can take out our spaces, that'll work. Image. There we go. It was one of the quotes I had copied over and it was a, a funky quote in there. So we should be able to add our spaces back in, check our syntax, and we should be good to go. All right. You could also add help text to the formula field to help people understand what to do with that, but the button should be pretty self-explanatory. So let's go ahead and hit next here and test this out and see if we got our code right. If this works, I'm going to show you why we would do something like this, because obviously you have the log a call button on the opportunity, but one of the benefits is that these formula fields you can use in list views and reports as well. Oops. Back to our opportunities. Open up our opportunity here. And now we have a log a call button which is clickable on the opportunity. So if I click it, boom, it lets us log a call, relates it to the correct opportunity, and we're good to go. So now let's take this a step further and see where we can use this formula field, this log a call button. So let's say we want to create a uh, report or a list view that allows our users to quickly log calls. I can create in my opportunity list views now. If I have just a regular list view of all, all of our opportunities or a custom one for all of our reps, I can edit it and add that formula field with that log a call button right to that list. So they could just click it if they want to log a call against that opportunity. And let's see here, log a call. Or actually, it's log a task. I named those a little bit differently, but that's all right. Oops, didn't add any extra fields. Not going to help. Come on. There we go. Opportunity name, account name, stage. Um, close date and amount. 
Perfect. So now we have a list view of opportunities for our users with a log a call button right next to each one of these. So if they get in here and they want to quickly go through and call each one of these, and this could be this could work on any of your records, either uh, leads, accounts, contacts, opportunities, custom object records, etc. Um, and if you click on so this opportunity here for Dickinson Mobile, when I click to log a call, it should automatically attach it to that Dickinson Mobile opportunity, as you see here. And your user can go ahead and enter what they need to and hit save. When they save it. It's actually going to go back to that Dickinson Mobile um, record, uh, but they can obviously, when you click that log of call, it opens up a new tab. So you can just go right back to the previous tab with the list view and make your next call. So you can see how some of this can be very, very um, valuable for creating dynamic ways for your users to uh, either engage the system by logging calls and information or by displaying and helping them through the processes in Salesforce by having these dynamic images on your page layouts based on specific stage or field information. Um, if you guys have any questions on, on anything we've covered today, please uh, make sure and let us know. You can also email us at uh, info or sales at Um Today, again, I. I'm going to cut this a little bit short. Hopefully each of you are, are busy enough to appreciate that. <laughs> I know I am. But uh, that's basically it. I just want to make sure you guys saw the power of those formula fields and what you can do with those formula fields in Salesforce. So um, we appreciate you taking the time to be here with us today. And if you have any questions and you're one of our, uh, if you're one of our clients, make sure and ask your consultant if, if one of these features makes sense for you to build some additional functionality into your processes. If you're not one of our clients, we're, we'd be happy to talk or discuss with you implementing these with your own Salesforce processes as well. So again, thank you so much for being on the call today. I'm going to go ahead and sign off, and you guys have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.